decades and decades and decades, what we've seen in the research is there is a disproportionate representation of children from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds in special education. So how do we fix the problem? The three of us that will be speaking mm -hmm. uh, have approaches to be able to address that question. How, what do we do? How can we do this? And I know that, you know, for example, I'm wondering if people might think like we're all going to overlap quite a bit. And the answer is no, there, there is some overlap. Dr. Wyatt will be focusing on African-American uh, English and how uh, language variations in general of English can be seen as disorders and how to assess in a way that does not misidentify linguistic variants as a disorder. This is a powerful uh, setup of different individuals because it's true, all of us have as a primary area of interest the test bias issue. Mm -hmm. and so I don't think you could have put together a better group of individuals representing diverse perspectives on that test bias and what it looks like with different populations, with different kinds of assessments. And then you have Dr. Pena. She'll be focusing on bilingual English-Spanish learners. So bilinguals who have English and Spanish as primary languages in their lives and how this affects their development and how, again, changes in the rate of the development in different areas can be viewed as potential language impairment in those kinds of children. How should we be thinking about developing tests and what kinds of things we should be doing? And and yeah, the te there's no one answer. I mean, no, there's tests are, are convenient and efficient. Uh -huh. They give us some nice information. But, but yeah, we need to dig or dig deeper. And then I'll be looking at primarily only English learners, but from the perspective of English only rather than with attention to the native language. Not because I think it's unimportant, but because I was trying to focus on creating a test that could work for anybody who was learning English, regardless of whether it was their first language or their second language. So there really is a different kind of purpose and body that we each focus on, which I think is extremely complementary. Mm -hmm. And what we're getting at, what you will see, I think that is common among all of us, is that we understand that the language development and the experiences of the individuals and the groups that we wanna work with are unique and must be taken into account because you can't compare, for example, all African-American children as if they were a monolithic group. You can't compare all you know, bilingual English Spanish speakers as if they were monolithic because some have learned more Spanish, some have learned more English, some are about balance. And you can't look at English learners as an equal group because they could be the same age and yet have varying levels of English development, even if they're in the same age, same grade, speak the same language.